Thank you. President Horvath and the other esteemed officials of the University of Oxford, distinguished members of the Ox Oxford Union, other dignitaries in attendance, and ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I am the only eight division world boxing champion in history, having won 11 major world titles, ranging from flyweight, which has an eight stone limit, to super welterweight, which has an 11 stone limit. My tailor has been kept very busy throughout my career. <laughs> Adjusting the waistband of my trunks. I have fought some of the best fighters in history. And yet I have to admit, as I stand before you, I intimidated when I think of the kind of main event headliners who face you over the years. Sir Winston Churchill, American President Reagan, Nixon and Carter, Mary Teresa, Dalai Lama, and, the, and Sir Elton John. <clears throat> and here am I, Emmanuel the Pidran Pacquiao, standing before you armed with just the equivalent of a sixth form education. And in this guy's respect for what your group and your university represent. And um, a pretty fair left hook. <laughs> if this give and take today were a tale of the tape, I would be a perf uh, respectful underdog. But be careful, I'm not that easy to floor. <laughs> when I receive your gracious invitation, I ask myself, what could I talk about that could possibly interest you? What could Mani Pacquiao say that would be of any impact, much more utility? To the, to the men and women who enjoy the highest standards of instruction of, at Oxford? The answer came fast. I know what I should speak about. Something very few among you can claim to know about my education, certainly non-traditional, non-formal, largely unstructured. <clears throat> I will call it my education in the open university of life. It is a matter of record that I only had uh, traditional formal sc schooling until secondary school, grade 12. It was only recently that I reached the university level through the alternative education program. We, would, we were dirt poor. I had to work since the age of seven to help my mother feed my uh, three siblings and me. My days, uh, many days, I was lucky to have one full meal. On days when we had no food, I would drink lots of water just to fill my stomach. And I remember um, when we were young, my younger brother crying, asking for food to my mother. And my mother uh, told us, just drink a lot of water uh, to survive, and tomorrow maybe we'll have food. So that's the, 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 the experience that I, I experienced when we were young. But my mind and spirit were never hungry. I read anything I could get my hands on. I even read the newspaper that my lunch or dinner came wrapped in. I read signs everywhere, even in moving vehicles. I learned measurements and weights by constantly reading the rates and tariffs at the warehouses where I work as a stiff door, a docker in our parlance. At night, when I could not sleep because of the cold, I would read the, the labels of the carton boxes that serve as my bed on the street pavement. The movements of the clouds, the tent of the horizon, and the clarity of the stars taught me when morning was about to come. And for me, morning did come, warm, bright, and simply amazing. A lesson in what, what can be achieved if you have determination, if you, if you ignore the odds against you, and as you are taught here at this magnificent institution, never, ever quit. Think of David and Goliath, and look at me. I'm not very big, and I never had five smooth stones to throw at any obstacle. But determination is a power tool. I won a lot of fights. Since 2016, 
I have been a sitting member of the, the Philippine Senate, having received the direct vote of over 16 million Filip uh, Filipinos. As such, I participate in debates that result in the passage of legislation, legislation which determine the course of our country's history and, and directly the world's. I don't fault anyone who views me as singular, singularly ill-equipped for this role. Instead, I ask, is there anyone more knowledgeable than this humble civil servant about the hardships incident to the way of life of the majority of our people? Who among my colleagues has faced poverty face to face from birth? Whose life's work has it been to battle illiteracy? In crafting effective laws, there is no better guide than the pulse of the masses. I may not have financial equity. I may not have, I may not be historically fluent. I may not even be socially adept, but I am philosophically rooted in my personal adversities, which morally bind me to the general struggle of our people. I am a fighter, and I will always be a fighter, not just because it is my profession, I was a fighter long before I first set foot in a boxing ring. All my life I have been fought to live. Every single day in my youth, I fought for survival. Now I do it and get paid for it. Then I was lucky to get a piece of bread for it. But how my struggles of any value to the Filipinos? It cannot feed or clothe all of them. The ma no matter how much I give financially, hundreds of thousands more remain wanting. In 2013, in the aftermath of Category 5 Super Typhoon Haiyan, locally remembered as Yolanda, the deadliest typhoon to devastate my country, leaving a record of more than 10,000 dead, I went to Tacloban and visited a nightmare. The place was a virtual ghost town. Everyone had lost someone from their family. Others, their entire family. No property was spared. There were bodies everywhere. There was no food, no water, no e electricity. Its face, I look into, bore the same expression, defeat. Not a single person there thought that they could ever recover from that tragedy. I thought to myself, I can give millions, as have many other donors from all over the world, but no amount of money can give these people hope. I too fought against despair. But then I had an idea. We set up a makeshift basketball court and I started shooting some hoops. Then one boy picked up uh, the ball after one of my shots and tried a shot. Soon there were enough for, of us to have five on five match, and we did. The smiles, the laughter, the hopes of joy of those boys during the, the game are memories forever each in my heart. To have lost everything overnight, including parents, siblings, friends, but to still have the ability to rise above one's person loss in its, and reach out to your fellow man. Even just in play, to find joy together, there, at that point, in those victims' eyes, I found hope. Those boys who had nothing left gave me hope. By the way, <clears throat> By the way, I would like to thank uh, the, United, uh, the United Kingdom uh, for donating more than 60 million uh, pound for the type 1 victims. Um, thank, you, thank you very much to, your, to all your support and the dona donation. Four years later, I would see the same physical and societal devastation in Marawi, our beautiful city of the south was reduced to ruins by civil strife, death and destruction, 
broke the hearts and backs of its residents, but not their spirit. One year later, Marawi is now under rehabilitation. This and other experiences like this motivated me to answer the call of public service. I believe in all humility that my life is just a snapshot. It is a glorified blow up of what millions of Filipinos live through uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. The hardships, the challenges, the back-breaking, hope extinguishing, despair, yet through the ashes of uh, destruction, the Filipino always manages to rise up and fight another day. I believe that I was born for a purpose and a distant, and distant to serve as an inspiration for the average Filipino in the rest of the world, to fight, to rise above adversity, to conquer and defy, and to embrace life in all its difficulties. Mani Pacquiao is the best fairy tale every Filipino could tell and retell to all generations yet to come. Mani Pacquiao's sto story, uh, story is incredible but true. Miracles do happen, dreams do come true. Being poor does not mean one must die poor. Hard work and persistence will set you free from the shackles of poverty, but it is faith that will take you to the very top. And that's, that is Mani Pacquiao's story. So I look, so I ask you, all of you, to never lose faith in what you can do as human being. Believe in the loyalty of the family and believe in the almighty God. It is not easy to believe in the power of one, but I ask, I ask you to look around you, count the faces, do the multiplication, and suddenly we are a power of 50, or 100, or 1,000. You, with your education, determination, and faith, you can change the world. Thank you. Mr. Pacquiao, thank you very much for that moving and, and inspiring speech. Um, if we can just start off with some questions from me and then we'll move to the audience. Yeah, sure, sure. So starting with your boxing career, you said before that sometimes you deliberately take uh, punches from your opponent, for instance, with Miguel Cotto. Uh, can you tell us why you do that? Why they... Why you deliberately let them take punches? With a Miguel Cotto fight? Yes. <laughs> um... Oh, that fight, I remember that um, Miguel Cotto is a very top opponent and um, he's a um, strong fighter. He's a heavy-handed boxer and, and he's different than other fighters that I faced before. And I suffered injury in my ear on that fight. That's the first time that I um, injured like that injury that I had when, when we had a fight. So that's why um, getting hard fight. We, we got, I, I got a hard fight of that Miguel Cotto, and I did my best, you know, yeah. work hard. Um, so your fight with Floyd Mayweather in 2015 went down as one of the greatest in boxing history. You've talked about a rematch. Um, is that going to happen, and do you think you'll beat him this time? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, he's coming back. Um, I heard he's um, going to fight December, uh, last week of December in, in Japan, and I'm still in boxing, so... Uh, um, I still believe that um, by next year uh, there's a big possibility that uh, we, I mean, we're going to do it again. Okay. <laughs> we can move into your career in politics. Do you think your experience as a child living in poverty is what drove you to want to become a politician and a public servant? Be, you know, I, I just want to tell you the story about uh, why I became a politician. Before, I, I really hate politician. You know, that's, that's, uh, that, that's true. 
But before I become a politician, every time I had a fight, um, most of my, my, my purse, my income in boxing, um, almost fifty percent of that I giving back to the to the Pilip, to the Filipino, to the to the poor people, uh, giving food and money to them, the family and uh, giving them house and lot uh, free. Um, I used to, uh, I always buy land and build a house and giving free to the Philippine, to the people who are uh, uh, less fortunate in, in life. And, and that's my, 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 uh, my heart before I became a politician. And then there's an interview that asked me about um, why you don't enter politics. And I told him, what? I don't, I, I hate politics, I hate them, but the politicians, they always promise and they don't do anything to the poor. And then I just, and then no, you can, you can very, you know, you can do a lot in, when you are there, when you have, um, when you serve people because uh, we know your heart is uh, honest and you can serve the people well because uh, you have a good heart for the, pe the, the, the people. And, and I realize, when things come, I realize that okay, um, not all the time that my own money I will I will I will expend on my own money to to them. Um, I cannot <laughs> I cannot help them all because uh, there's a lot and my money is limited uh, from my income in boxing. So I enter politics and that the the the, the beginning uh, become a politician and it's for me it's not um, it's not easy. Um, <laughs> it's not easy, it's not hard to. Um, I can say it's not easy because even in, in, in the midnight, somebody will, will knock your door and asking for help and like that. Different than before, when you're not a politician, when you sleep, uh, you wake up in the morning, good. You don't need to think about the, uh, how, uh, what you're gonna do about the, the people, the, the government. But this time, um, before I sleep, I have to think about what I'm gonna do for the people, and when I woke up in the morning, what I'm gonna do for the people, and that's my dream, of course. Um, sometimes um, I don't have time to my family uh, because of my uh, busy schedule in politics, but uh, I told my wife, yeah, you have to understand me because uh, and that's our heart to help them to help them, so. So touching on some of, the, um, some of the challenges of politics, during your run for the Senate in 2016, you expressed some disapproval uh, for people that enter into same-sex marriages. Your comments could be perceived as hurtful by people around <coughs> the world and in your own country. How do you resolve the tensions with your belief in God and the Bible and your political career? Okay, um, that's, um, I think it's uh, out of context, the, the um, actually, uh, if you review the, the whole interview that asked me, in fact, uh, if, you, if, if, if you know this, in my, in my uh, I, love, um, I love them, I love uh, gay people, even my, my, the, son, the son of my brother, gay, uh, almost of my workers is gay, my campaigner is almost, most of them is gay. Um, <laughs> That's 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 um, that's true. That's true. I mean, uh, I mean, that's true because I I, I believe they, they, they I believe them. They work hard. If they come in, they work hard, and they they uh, doing a, a a medical mission. They they help a lot. Uh, work hard, and uh, they just they just the, the context. They uh, get the context of the the interview and, and use it against me, but. Uh, I love them. I do not, uh, I mean, persecute them. I love them, and I just want to uh, to help them. I mean, um, do you think that um, speaking up against same-sex marriages in the position you're in could be seen as a form of persecution, perhaps? Or of course, the 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 position of the government in the Philippines. So we. We disagree. We don't want a uh, uh, same-sex marriage uh, pass in in our country. Um, most of us uh, disagree with that, but we don't um, persecute them. We love them. We love we love uh, gay, gay people. 
and uh, actually they are uh, real they are if they if you if you if your friend is gay, you know that they're loyal to you, they're real friend. Not like other people as a friend in your, when you face them, but at back, uh, stabbing you at the back. But these people are, um, most of them, uh, in fact, I have a lot of friends uh, gay. Um, so Even my relatives. <laughs> So in the Philippines, you have to be 40 to run for president. I believe you're now 39. Have you, do you have any presidential ambitions? Have you thought about the election in 2022? Uh, I don't have that in my mind right now, but they, a lot of people saying that um, next for, uh, I'm the one the next for the president, but I'm not thinking about that because being a senator is um, it's a big responsibility and I have, uh, I have to give time also to my family, especially my wife, asking for my time, more time for, for them. Um, that's the thing, I mean, I don't, have that, I, I don't have that in my mind right now, to become a president of the, of the Republic of the Philippines. That's but maybe one day. For more, uh, <laughs> more than three, three years more. Uh, finally, I just wanted to ask your opinion on political dynasties. Uh, playing a prominent role in politics in the Philippines. Do you think that a family that is active in politics over many generations constitutes a, a political dynasty? And do you think that's problematic? Or? Uh, political, political dynasty, um, I, I don't believe that because the people we, unless you appoint someone to become a leader and then that's, you can say a political dynasty, but, but <clears throat> we have uh, election and the people are free to choose who they're going to be elected. elected. I mean, we have, we have uh, a freedom to, to run as, uh, um, as, a, as a politics and as a politician. Okay. Should we move to some questions from the audience? Yeah, you can, you can ask a question. Would you like to just uh, raise your hand if you'd like to ask Mr. Pacquiao a question? Yeah, yeah. Can we go to the hand in the second row in the black coat? Just wait for the microphone to get to you. Thank you very much for your speech. Um, what is your opinion on boxers having professional fights against um, fighters from other disciplines? <laughs> uh, okay, all I can say is... All I can say is, um, if you're an MMA fighter, it's different to boxing. So, uh, boxing is different also to MMA. If a boxer fight to MMA, I think it's disadvantage for a boxer. It's advantage for an MMA fighter. But if uh, the MMA uh, fight in uh, MMA fighter fight in a boxing match, disadvantage for a MMA because uh, he's fighting in. A, it's like. Um, uh, a tiger and fighting uh, against uh, a shark. <laughs> Does that answer so, your question? Yeah. <laughs> see, you know, I'm talking about a tiger fighting a shark. If the fight is in, in, in the ocean, of course. <laughs> The shark will <laughs> with the tiger. So if you but had a fight, fight with fight Conor McGregor, <laughs> huh? so if you had a boxing match with Conor McGregor, do you think that would be fair on him? Um, fighting with him in, in boxing ring, I'm yeah, boxing match. Yeah, yeah. In boxing match, I'm going to be advantage. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you very much. We have another question. Um, the hand in the fourth row along. Thank you, I like this question. <laughs> <laughs> Senator Pacquiao, thank you for your moving remarks. Um, they were great. Uh, you're on the record as supporting your president's use of extrajudicial killings for drug offenders. Conservative estimates have at least 3,000 people that have been killed since the initiative started. Um, you mentioned struggling for your people. How do extrajudicial killings help the people you're struggling for? And is there a successful historical approach you're model modeling the drug policy after? Okay, that's a good question. <laughs> Very good question. First, 
first of all, I don't, um, I don't like uh, extrajudicial killing. I, I don't like that. Um, second, um, there is no extrajudicial killing in the Philippines. Uh, it just they came out from uh, the opposition mind that to uh, to ruin the um, to the administration, uh, the president. In fact, uh, the president tell them told them that we don't want extrajudicial killing. We don't want uh, we don't want uh, due process and, and but if the policeman is in danger. Don't put your life in, in, uh, in a dangerous situation. If, um, but the president told them, give them a chance to, to, uh, to change their life, to, to live a new life like that, and telling them to surrender, um, um, stop uh, using um, illegal drugs, stop uh, sealing drugs everywhere, and then, and then, but I think, because of, uh, this is what I can say, because of poverty, I think they don't want to stop and then some of them are carrying guns and then want to fight the, uh, the, the armed forces, so, so the policemen especially. Um, of course, if uh, the drug poser uh, has a gun and then trying to, to the policeman trying to stop them and pointing to the policeman, the policeman is, um, uh, obligate to, to shoot them. But they're giving them a uh, chance. In fact, the president is not tolerating them. If you, if, if you know in the Philippines, there's uh, more than almost 1,000 policemen are, uh, are discharged of the service. Uh, there's a general, colonel, different ranks discharged of the service because of that uh, abuses uh, power. That what they are doing, what they are doing, what they are doing about this uh, fight against illegal drugs. So, uh, unfair to, to the administration. Um, I am a senator of the Republic of the Philippines. Unfair to the administration that um, the the news is only one-sided. But the thing is, uh, the reality is, uh, it's fair. Uh, if you look at the record of the policemen who are uh, discharged from the service is more almost 1,000 policemen, including their uh, general, there's uh, colonels, um, most of them. But actually, <clears throat> I cannot say uh, we don't have uh, extrajudicial killing in the Philippines. There's a killing that is, uh, is still under investigation. Even the policemen are involved in that, uh, in that incident. And, uh, the government will not uh, tolerate them. They are still under investigation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, can I go for the hand on the front row? Hi, Manny. I just wanted to start by saying that uh, you're such an inspiration to Christians like myself around the world that a man like you is such an outspoken proponent for his faith. So I just wanted to thank you for that. Um, and it can't be easy. Uh, and I just wanted to also say, your children, would you want them to be fighters and do any of them themselves want to be fighters? And if you do want them, why? And if you don't, why not? Ooh. <laughs> I have, um, of course, uh, my children, uh, they want to box. Uh, they want to be a, a, become a fighter. But I don't want them to, to become a boxer or a MMA fighter. Uh, my two boys, um, they're 18 and, and 17. They want to fight in MMA or boxing, to be a boxer, but I don't want them to be a boxer because boxing is not, <laughs> it's not that easy. I, in fact, <laughs> because, you know, they're, I discourage them because I've been there. I, I feel what, um, I mean, what's hard work, how, um, what is the, 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 the um, difficulties being a, by a fighter, in, you know that, I think uh, some, of, uh, some of you is know that about become a fighter, become an athlete, how you discipline and uh, work hard in training. And I, I want them to, in fact, I want them to study in this uh, university. <laughs> uh. We'd be happy to have them. We'd be very happy to have them. Um, can we go to the hand in the second row? Yeah. Um, thank you. 
Um, my name is Joel. I'm from Uganda. I'm doing the BCL at Jesus College. Uh, my question is with regards to your boxing career, uh, which is your most memorable title winning fight? And why? Why do you think, that, from the answer that you'll give, why do you pick that particular one? Thank you. Um, my memorable um, title winning fight, I think I cannot say one, but more than one, uh, including uh, the, uh, um, your boy, uh, Ricky Hatton. <laughs> <clears throat> you can fight in Oscar de la Hoya, uh, Miguel Cotto, um, Margarito. Uh, there's a lot um, I consider as a um, difficult fight and memorable fight. Thank you. Thank you. Give the hand in the second row. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Um, Thank you for coming to the Oxford Union and uh, speaking to all of us. Um, so now Duterte has been in power uh, for two years of these six uh, afforded to him by the Constitution. Um, kind of uh, piggybacking off the uh, former question that was made, uh, human rights abuse, um, uh, e uh, execution of journalists and obstruction of uh, due process. Do you think your country from a political perspective is on the right track? And if not, how do you think we can, uh, or you as, as an acting senator and the rest of your government, what do you think you can do to get it on the right track? Um, even the, our president is uh, condemning those uh, who killed the, um, I mean, the journalists. Um, in a, we even we, we experienced that uh, a lot of uh, journalists are have killed in in, in one incident, uh, the massacre. Um, <clears throat> and uh, my job is is to legislate. Um, uh, to make laws in the age of legislation, um, to uh, to help the, the the government and to help the our president. Also, our president is um, you know. <clears throat> I just want to tell you this: the president now in the Philippines is my is 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 a close friend of mine. Before he became a president, before he was a, a mayor, um, he is my friend before, and I live in in in, in his town in Dabao. <laughs> Um, I can say he's a nice person. His his heart is for the people. He's like uh, I can say he's um, I can say activist. I cannot say that, but he's uh, more on uh, his heart is more on the people, the benefits of the poor people. He want to help the people, and that's his heart. Even now he become a president, his priority is for the people, and he don't want to. Uh, he don't like the people, uh, like these people, like uh, drugs or uh, abusive people or uh, uh, arrogant people. He don't like that. He want uh, a fair and, he, in fact, he, he just want he want uh, the rich people to help the poor people. That's what his heart want. And um, <clears throat> we totally condemn those. Uh, um, killings about, especially the journalists. Um, we don't want killings in, in our country. We condemn that, and we, we still, our government is uh, investigating of that. Although we're not like other countries that uh, in, in technology, um, we're behind. So it's a slow process to investigate. Uh, we don't want to point someone that uh, <clears throat> point someone right away. Um, we have to uh, make uh, pass the due process. Talking about. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. Can we get the hand in the back row? Hello, Senator Pacquiao. Um, so I had a question in regard to uh, obviously your lived experience and and the school of life that you've you've gone through has, has taught you so much and. Uh, I think it's an honor for all of us to be in your presence uh, as someone with the kind of energy, the kind of will, the strength of the will that you have. And, and in that regard, um, obviously to accomplish the things you have, it, it takes a lot of passion um, and a lot of strength. And I was curious though, in regard to things like consistency, what, um, what motivates you in terms of not giving up, in terms of staying consistent uh, to what helps you achieve such great heights? And, your career as a boxer and as a politician? 
Um, in my boxing career, uh, motivate me. It's my, it, it's my family. Of course, boxing is my passion, and I grew up in boxing, and that's my. I think boxing is one of my uh, favorite uh, habit in life. Boxing, so, and and. Uh, being a public servant, uh, I'm motivated because uh, every time I go around in the Philippines, I can see a poor people that need uh, my help, um, need uh, uh, help, especially uh, us as a public servant. Thank you. Thank you. Can we go to the hand at the back in the, the back. blue jumper? T touching on uh, some of the things you spoke about earlier on, um, your family motivating you, I'm interested when you look at boxers and the management side of things, and you also referenced money that you've been able to earn, and obviously you can't give it all to the Philippines and you've gone into politics now. What are the parts from your career in dealing with management, all the sort of stuff that you don't hear about necessarily that's in the ring, that's out of the ring, that we know about with other boxers, what, with those things, have you learnt from and you're going to apply to your political career from the management okay. side? Okay, manage, um, um, managing time, uh, just time management. And um, in, in, in boxing, I manage my discipline myself and manage my time. In politics, I, I can use that some of uh, my experience in boxing to use in politics, especially the... Uh, in terms of um, keep on fighting, keep on fighting, especially those uh, illegal activities, and also uh, uh, keep on pushing the uh, whatever I want that that the poor people will benefit um, in, in in politics, and also in politics, uh, uh, it's big different than compared to boxing. You know, no, it's I just mean the management side, like, you know, the management side, things go on, maybe you weren't worried about it, maybe your family, you've already referenced them, your family are important and they help you with that thing, side of things, but I was just interested in that side. Yeah, it's about family. Yeah, um, so, um, yeah. <coughs> Next question. Can we go to the member right at the back in the blue jumper on the left? <coughs> um. Hi, my name's Tom, I'm a big fan. Uh, of, of, your, of your career, and um, I just wonder, how much longer do you think you will continue boxing for? Oh, it's not that long. I think... Uh, <laughs> I think... Um, a couple more fights and then that's it. Um, do, you think you'll, do you think you'll ever box in, um, in Britain? Maybe against the Mir Khan? He's calling your name out. Uh, well... Um, that, that's uh, also pa uh, possible, but uh, uh, we'll see. We'll see. It depends on uh, the negotiation and about the, um, I mean, uh, how we, we discuss uh, business, um, we discuss about uh, the fight. But um, as long as he's still in boxing and I'm still in boxing, there's a possibility. Yeah. I think it'll be a good fight for you. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Can we go to the member right at the back in the blue jumper, waving her the hand, yeah. Good evening. My name is Chantal, and I used to be a member of the kickboxing team here at Oxford, and I'm also a very strong Christian. So I wanted to ask you, in your opinion, what is the correlation between faith and sport? Oh, being a, thank you, uh, Chantal. Um, being a Christian, um, It's different to uh, boxing. Uh, Christian is uh, <laughs> uh, being a Christian is uh, your uh, um, uh, obeying and following God, following Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and that's the most important in li important thing in life, because I believe there is no other way of salvation only through Jesus Christ, and also. Uh, being a, a boxer, uh, a fighter, uh, that's my uh, profession and 
And I think uh, it helped when you have faith to God and you have confidence that uh, God is always watching you, whatever you do, as long as um, it's honest and uh, fair, not, I mean, you work hard, uh, and you know, you have hope uh, when you have God in your life and uh, you have peace of mind. That's the most important thing. And you're excited every, every morning, every day in your life, you're excited to train, to work hard, um, especially if you're a boxer. You're, you're excited to train every day. Thank you, Chantel. I actually have a quick question about your faith. So you often rely heavily on the Bible on, in challenging actions of legislators. Do you think that the reference to the Bible in such matters is appropriate in a country whose constitution um, specifically espouses um, a, a separate church and a state? Teaching in the Bible is, um, <clears throat> I think, mm, if you see the, the constitution, even in the other, even in the other country, most of the constitution is um, based on the Bible, what the Bible says. Um, I think uh, it's very, it's connected to the Bible, but uh, um, religion is different, uh, um, separate from the government. Um, and do you think that's how it should be? Do you think that religion should be separate to the government? Religion should be, um, uh, that's what the constitution said, uh, separate to the government, but uh, you know, most of the laws that in our country is, uh, if you read the Bible, it's based in the Bible. Well, so it's a guiding principle. Basically. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, God's principle, basically. Okay, I think we have time for two more questions. <coughs> Can we go to the hand of the yellow sleeves <laughs> in the second row? Hi. <clears throat> I wanted to ask what the most important aspects of boxing training. Is it technique? Is it weights? Is it fitness? And uh, what advice do you have for members of Oxford University's boxing team to be the best they possibly can be? Okay, um, my advice to the boxers, uh, this is uh, my advice. Keep thinking positive, never think negative, because when you think negative, that's, uh, it will lose your focus to reach your goal uh, or dream to achieve. Um, work hard, discipline yourself, uh, love one another, I mean, be nice to others, what I'm talking about, be nice to others, uh, uh, be, uh, be kind, be, be a good man, and that's the that's, um, most important thing is uh, believe God and work hard, discipline yourself, that's the most important thing. And this is, this is my mind, this is my mind, when I started boxing until now. Uh, I never think uh, negative, I always think positive, okay? Um, I never think bad things about my, my, uh, my friends or about anybody. I always think uh, uh, positive, meaning positive that this guy is, is good, this guy is kind, this guy is nice, this person is nice. And I always think uh, positive that uh, this is my dream and I, will, I can achieve, achieve this dream because I work hard, I discipline myself. Um, that's that's the, the beauty of uh, thinking, um, thinking uh, positive. So that's good, that's the reality, that's my advice, thank you. I think we have time for one more question. Could we go to the lady on the front row? Hi, um, thank you so much for the speech, and I, I'm also one, of, one member of the Oxford, Union, oh, sorry, Oxford University Boxing Club, <clears throat> and I wanted to ask what's the women's boxing scene like in your country? Because we are having our very first um, all female, all female boxing match coming up on November the 17th, and I, I wonder like how could we possibly do better to encourage more girls, especially from different nations and from different ethnic backgrounds, to get involved in our sports. Oh, thank the, you. The women boxing is um, 
No, in, also in the, in the Philippines, we have a women boxing. Um, we, we support, we build. I build uh, boxing gyms in the Philippines and build, uh, helping the, the women boxing. I think uh, um, it's a few in the world, not uh, too many people know that there's um, a good uh, woman fighter in boxing. So it's a good thing that I heard that um, there's a lot of uh, women boxer here in, 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 in UK and uh, I'm support, supporting you 100%. Um, but especially this, uh, this fight again, uh, this fight, uh, this coming fight on November 17th. 17, 17. 17. Uh, where is that? Where is that promotion? It's uh, here. Yeah, it's yeah. the sports center. It's here, oh. <laughs> Yeah, you should come, please. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could come. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for coming and answering our questions. Can everyone join me in thanking Senator Manuel Pacquiao?